Welcome to Moments in Time and Space, a microfiction podcast, bringing you tales of horror and suspense with your host, Aaron Miracle. Hello, everyone. Construction sites in the city are always amazing to see. Large machines digging great pits in the middle of a concrete jungle and raising dwellings of glass and steel that tower over the streets. At least, that's what you hope they are doing. The rumble of large machines sent constant vibrations through the supervisor's trailer. Norm sat at his desk, hunched over building plans and project schedules. The project was two weeks behind, but Norm was not overly concerned. He had built some contingency time into the schedule, and there were areas where time could be made up if some of the crews put in a bit of overtime. He would have this 20-story monstrosity up on schedule and on budget. A light buzzing began at Norm's desk, and his cell phone screen flickered to life. Norm glanced at it and read a single line of text from Robert, the dig supervisor. We found it. Norm fired back a quick reply of OMW and smiled slightly as he rose from his chair. He snagged a hard hat from a hook near the door of the trailer and slipped it on before he stepped out onto the construction site. The rumbling of a loud machine shook Norm's bones as he headed towards the elevator cage. He glanced down to the four-story pit to check on the progress of the work. Some of the rebar on the concrete for the parking garage were in place, but it was a long way from taking a recognizable shape. Satisfied with what he saw, Norm stepped into the elevator cage and took a short ride to the bottom of the pit. When the elevator reached its destination, Robert was waiting for him. The tall, thin man was wearing dark sunglasses, and his red hard hat bobbled as he gave Norm a curt nod. Both men walked in silence towards a white tarpaulin tent set up next to one wall of the pit. Robert reached the tent first and held open one of the flaps. Norm stepped through and was greeted by a large man holding a machine gun pistol standing in front of a large, jagged tunnel dug into the side of the pit. Norm flashed his ID and the man stepped aside, allowing Norm and Robert to proceed into the tunnel. A string of dim work lights provided a faint path for men to follow. You think this is it? Norm asked. Based on what I have observed in the last four weeks, I am very confident we have found it, Robert said. When we first started digging, petty crimes in a three-block radius rose 10%. Over a period of time, our men who were doing the excavation reported feelings of dread and nausea. We took to rotating digging crews to minimize the impact on our workforce. Dread and nausea? Are we at risk? It takes about three days for the feelings to manifest, and two more days for them to become intense enough to incapacitate most people. The two men stepped into a large cavernous room that was lit by portable flood lamps. The walls were smooth and featureless. Three men dressed in white hazmat suits studied a large object in the middle of the room. At first glance, it looked like a large black stone altar, but Norm knew it was not meant for that purpose. What have we figured out so far? Norm asked, keeping his distance from the object. Robert moved his sunglasses. Very little. It is some type of container that is approximately eight feet long, three feet wide, and two feet deep. The entire surface is without blemish except for the seam where there appears to be some type of lid. We have no idea what the material could be and no idea who put it here. Fair enough. Management tasks us to dig and find this thing. Right now, that is mission accomplished. I'll give them a shout and see what they want to do next. Sir, I'd like to raise a concern. What is it, Robert? I know how petty crime increased as we made progress towards the object. When we broke into this chamber, there were 10 homicides that night within a 12 block radius. That is a 900% increase over the annual average for the entire city. And? I'd like to go on record that I feel that no attempt should be made to open the container. I fear there could be further consequences on a greater scale. Norm weighed Robert's words and slowly nodded. So noted. Let me know if anything changes. Norm headed back up the tunnel and Robert watched him go. Once he was out of sight, Robert turned to look at the ebony container once more. He felt the hairs on the back of his neck rise as technicians ran their hands over the surface of the lid. Notice anything strange in your neighborhood lately? Thank you for listening. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. You can also follow me on Twitter and Moments in TAS. Feel free to recommend this podcast to others and help it grow. The opening and closing theme is Creepy Night by Daniel Carlton. Until next time, be safe, be smart, and be well. See you soon.